Christopher, if there's any light on this day, it's this. Uh, earlier we were telling you that multiple people were confirmed missing. We've just gotten an update from an Howard County official who says nobody is reported missing at this time. However, the, the devastation is still terrible and one person's life was taken. A woman was killed in the floodwaters. I'm going to have you take a look down Main Street here. Uh, still many emergency crews here, but that's not where the real damage is. We have some video as we toured Main Street with Governor Larry Hogan a little bit earlier today. Dozens of cars damaged and destroyed. More than a dozen businesses ripped to pieces by the floodwaters. Still a dangerous situation. A gas leak they worked on earlier down power lines, calling it very quite extensive damage. Luckily, the standing water is gone. However, there's a lot of mud, and we talked with several officials earlier about these circumstances. It's hard to give them any kind of consolation that's going to make them feel better today, but uh, we're just going to promise them that we're going to uh, you know, provide all the resources we can to help them. We're going to be trying to help house people that have lost their homes, and we're going to try to provide the assistance to uh, get the, uh, the entire community put back together. People have stayed up all night uh, b figuring out what are the first steps in what is essentially uh, looks like a war zone. And we will build out of this. We will rebuild the city. We will make it vital and vibrant and even more vital and vibrant than it was uh, before this occurrence. People are going to have to be patient, but we will not be patient in going after the resources that are necessary. Now, the community has really started to come together for this. There was a group of people over here that just came down. They actually said they didn't want to talk to me on camera, but they brought chicken noodle soup with signs that said free for the people who have been working hard. There are police officers, fire crews, and more who have been working tirelessly throughout the night, have not slept at all to try to take care of this situation. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you need help, the non-emergency number to call is 410-313-2200. Of course, if you do have an emergency, you would want to call 911. The Roger Carter Center is open indefinitely to help those in need because, Jennifer, it is a devastating situation. That is really the word that most people have been using because of all this flooding. Lacey, I imagine you've been hearing this flooding being compared to Hurricane Agnes back in 1972, and I know AM reporter from 1090, Bill Vanko, is on the scene, and he has been saying this is something he's been hearing over and over again. I want you to describe for the viewers some of the video that we've been seeing because it, it looks like parts of the roadway have just been swept away. Entire parts, uh, lower portions of buildings have been basically caved out. Of, imagine trying to build a sand castle and swooping your hand in and, and moving that sand away. And, and that's not sand, that's concrete chunks of building that is no longer there. Jen, Governor Larry Hogan said this is the worst devastation I've experienced since I've been governor. As we walked down Main Street, it was a whole different ball game. Seeing the pictures, seeing the video is one thing, but for us to actually trudge through the mud and see the glass shattered, the cars flipped over, and the one building we walked into, the front was completely torn out. As you walked in, you could see a hole from one side to the other side. I don't even know how that building was still standing. The officials with Howard County told me they are worried about the structural damage to many of these buildings. So as of now, nobody is allowed down in that area other than the crews. They did take us, the media, down there with Governor Larry Hogan and some other officials earlier. But they're just talking about how bad this situation is. But Governor Larry Hogan said the people are strong, they're resilient, they've been through tough times before, and of course the community, as I mentioned, already coming together to support the area and start to rebuild as fast as that is possible. All right, Lacey, thanks so much for joining us. The video and the stories coming out of Ellicott City today, just absolutely astounding. You can't really wrap your mind around it. Thanks so much for joining us, and we want to send it now to meteorologist Mary Marshall, who's tracking another potential line of storms coming by our way today. And Mary, before we get to that, help put last night's storm into perspective for us. Jen, this is absolutely incredible. I mean, in my meteorology career, it's not very often that I've seen something like this occur. Updated numbers now for Ellicott City show that they received six and and a half inches of rain, nearly seven inches of rain in a span of just two hours. At one point, 30 minutes into the storm, they received more than three inches of rain. Three inches of rain and 30 minutes. That's unheard of. And this is what we call a 1,000 year rainfall event. Now, to clarify, it means that it has a 0.1% 
chance of happening in any given year. Basically, a very tiny, small chance of happening in any given year. Doesn't mean that this is going to happen only once every 1,000 years. You recall at least five years ago, we had some uh, heavy rains and some flooding around Ellicott City. So on any given year, the chance is so small. And for this to happen is just it's just devastating and it's uh, incredible to watch in terms of the, the video and everything coming in. So let's talk about other rainfall amounts around the region. Lots of areas saw more than four inches. Catonsville, Pikesville, Columbia, more than four inches of rain and in those locations. Towson, more than three inches there. Eldersburg, 1.87 inches. So it wasn't quite even the way that the rain was spread out. And there's still some flooding concerns. All of that uh, water from the river out in the Howard County area is now flowing to the south. Uh, to Anne Arundel County. So if you are in Jessup, Severn, Odenton, uh, Crofton, Bowie, and those areas, there's still a flood warning uh, until about 5 o'clock this afternoon. You could receive light to moderate flooding if you're around the waterways and those particular areas. The next thing that we are still watching is a chance for showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. We just cannot catch a break. Here we are on radar. We can see those showers and thunderstorms beginning to develop just outside of Hagerstown over western Maryland and in western Virginia. This is moving over to the east in our direction. So in the next few hours, we will start to see the rain falling around the region. Here we are at around the 3 p.m. hour. You can see the scattered showers beginning to pop up and as we advance the clock even further, 4, 5 and 6 o'clock p.m. More widespread scattered showers will push into the area. We're watching out for pockets of heavy rain that could potentially push into the area. That's where you see those orange and yellow colors that are moving onto the screen. Now this model has been bouncing the main area of heavy rain around all afternoon. It likely is going to keep it to the south of us, but that doesn't mean that we still can't see some pockets of heavy rain popping up as this as these storms get underway in the surrounding area once more again. The other big story. It's hot out there. 87 degrees now at BWI. It feels more like 92 degrees. It's sticky out there with those high dew points. 89 downtown Baltimore and 84 degrees in Randallstown. We'll see highs between 86 and 90 degrees with that chance for showers and thunderstorms. Again, heavy rain will be possible out of some of those storms that pop up. 89 tomorrow. A cold front is coming. It'll give us a 30% chance for showers and thunderstorms. Some lingering clouds and a slight rain chance Tuesday with the high of 88. Mid to upper 80s for most of the week with the rain chance returning.